Mr. Hollinger, please. Mr. Hollinger's office. May I please speak to Donald Nora? It's Anne. Mrs. Holman is no longer with Newsview. To whom did you wish to speak? I wish to speak to Donald. Donald Hollinger? He's in a meeting. Would you care to leave a message? Yes, well, uh, just tell him Anne called. Anne whom? <laughs> Anne whom? Anne Marie, that's whom. <laughs> Isn't he out of the meeting yet? Not yet. I'll tell him you called. What was the name again? Same as it was before. Anne Marie. <laughs> Don't tell me he's still in the same meeting. No, he's back. If you'll hold a second. Holding a second to cinch after calling for hours. Mr. Hollinger, do you want to take this call? It's that girl. What day this is? Well, I know it's Thursday, but if I have to guess, how about Tuesday? Wrong. This is Donald Hollinger Day. First, the new secretary. Yes, I want to talk to you about her. Second. Now, sit down. I don't want you to keel over in a faint. I mean, the way she sounded on the phone. So... How long have we been waiting for reservations to La Petite Sank? And the way she said that girl. Who? Your secretary. Oh, oh, yeah. Anyway, the restaurant call this afternoon. They've had a cancellation. Somebody must have died. Oh, you mean that exclusive restaurant with only five tables? Five tables and the best French food in the entire world. Uh, with the exception of here, of course. <laughs> You'd have made a great diplomat. You think so? Mm. Never entered my mind. <laughs> I'll tell you, when I walked into my office this morning, I thought I was in the wrong place. Mademoiselle? Thank you. The pencils were sharpened, the lights were turned on. Thank you. The desk was dusted. Hmm. Well, now, what are you going to have? I tell you, honey, she's not to be believed. Y you want to start with some escargot? Why? Well, because tonight we live. The sky's the limit. No, I mean, why is she not to be believed? Who, Pat? Well, because she's so super efficient. Anticipates your every need. I, you don't have to ask her to do anything. She just automatically goes and does it. Terrific. Hey, how about les goûts avec fromage parfait? Where did you find her, Donald? I didn't. They sent her up from the pool when Nora left. Yeah, why did Nora have to leave? Well, it was either that or have the baby in the office. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, look. Escalope de veau. That's with a cream sauce on top. How old is she? Ooh, I don't know. About your age, I imagine. Look, honey. Poisson Veronique. That's sand dabs with white grapes flown in from Paris and a cream sauce made from only French cows. We gotta have that. What does she look like? Does she wear glasses? No. What color hair does she have? Well, sort of brown. How tall is she? I'm sort of average. Tell you the truth, I never even noticed. You know that she went to the drugstore this morning and got some Danish pastry for me to have with my coffee. She didn't. <laughs> would you care to order, sir? Yes, yes, I would. I'll have um, escargot, endive vinaigrette, cream a la champignon, poisson veronique, and chocolate mousse. <laughs> <laughs> Donald, that's terrific. How do you know what you're ordering? Oh, Pat got a menu this morning and translated it for me. What are you going to have? A cheeseburger. <laughs> oh, hi. Hello. 
May I uh, help you? Help me what? Oh. Are you Pat? I'm Miss Crawford. Oh. I'm Anne. Uh, Anne Marie. Uh, Miss Miss Anne Marie. Miss, Miss Marie. Did you wish to see Mr. Hollinger? Yes, uh, that's all right. I'll, I'll go right in. I'll see if he's free. Uh, Mr. Hollinger? Miss Marie's here. Mr. Hollinger? Since when did you need a formal announcement? I think since yesterday. Will you two introduce yourself? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, by the way, I finished typing up that stock market piece for you. Already? That's great. Come on in. I just have a couple of paragraphs to check, then we can go. Isn't she fantastic? Donald, you don't ask one girl to rave about another. You do in a case like this. Not in a case where a girl is definitely not just sort of brown, sort of average, sort of anything. She's absolutely gorgeous. Isn't that one girl raving about another? No. That's one girl complaining about another. I never noticed she was beautiful. Of course, now that you mention it, I can see it. Well, I'm certainly glad I brought it to your attention. Now, if you don't mind, may I jump out your window? She's the most extremely efficient secretary I've ever had. Other than that, I have no interest in her. Well, you're very fortunate. There's got to be something the matter with her. Nobody's perfect. Oh, yeah? You come pretty close. Diplomat. Come on, I'm finished. Let's go. I ordered you some lunch. Oh, uh, Pat, I'm sorry you went to that trouble. I'm taking Ann to lunch. We'll be back in an hour. Mr. Hollinger's office. Oh, yes, sir. He's still here. It's Mr. Kinsella. Didn't that stuff I wrote go upstairs? Yes, but he wants to talk to you about the Washington assignment. What Washington assignment? Uh, he'll be right with you, Mr. Kinsella. Well, I heard Mr. Kinsella's secretary talking about it, and it sounded just right for you, so I suggested that she mention you to Mr. Kinsella and... Washington? Is that D.C. or the one that's somewhere around Oregon? Uh, yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Kinsella. Well, yes, sir. C certainly. Of course I'm interested. Uh, I'll just grab a sandwich and I'll be right up. Now, that's really a wonderful thing you did. We're recommending Donald and Paul. Oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Say, I, I think you ought to know that even though you've only been here a, a short while, uh, how long? Well, the, the Donald just, just thinks the world of you. I mean, he's he's always raving about how efficient you are and everything, and and, and how you never do your nails, and how how sharp you you, you sharpen the pencils. And oh, that really is sharp. I say, you are a prize. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you very much. And uh, it was very nice meeting you. I, I think I'm late for something. Oh. <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Pat and I have really been beating our brains out. It's going to take at least a couple of more hours, so I'm afraid you and I are going to have to forget about tonight. Oh, don't you worry about it. What's one little broken date? <laughs> Donald, will you stop apologizing? We can always go to a movie. <laughs> oh, Donald, it's not such a big deal. We'll simply have lunch another time. <laughs> How important can a little dinner be? Donald, will you stop worrying? I understand. Work comes first. Bye. I lose. Oh, no. I lose. Hello? Miss Marie, I don't know if you remember me or not, but we used to date each other. Was it about a thousand years ago? I have a very dim memory of you. What was your uh, name again? The name is Donald Hollinger. But you can call me Darling. When? Tonight. Well, if this isn't your lucky day, I just happen to be free. You no, know, you're terrific. I've stood you up two nights, three lunches, and not a word. Well, Donald, I may very well be terrific. And I don't want to strike a blow at your ego. But there are times when a girl is very happy to have a few moments to herself. You know, to wash her hair, do her nails, and, and lots of other chores. Like solitaire and singles checkers. Singles checkers? 
Yeah, I just beat myself three out of four games. What time are you coming? Oh, honey, that's a slight problem. Look, can you meet me here? I have to work right up until you can get here. Say, say about seven. Mm. Seven will be beautiful. Bye. I hope you like these. White on white, 15 and a half, 33, right? Right. See, I didn't have time to change, so Pat went out and got a few things for me. Oh, I thought you'd like this stripe. Oh, boy. Now, there's a girl that knows how to pick out a tie for a man. Mm. And I thought you'd prefer boxers, size 32, right? <coughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, well, I'm all, I'm all set. So if you girls will excuse me, I'll make like a quick change artist. Uh, certainly. After you. <laughs> Does um, your husband mind your working? <laughs> oh, I'm not married. Oh. You go steady? <laughs> not since high school. <laughs> because uh, Donald and I, we mostly date each other. So I heard. Oh. <laughs> I thought maybe you didn't. Heard. Oh, I checked. Oh, well, if you check, then... You check? He's not married or engaged. We're not married or engaged. There's a big difference. We are not married or engaged together because we want it that way. You want it that way, you'll have to take the risks. What risks? Well, someone might come along who doesn't want it that way. Someone like who? Are you implying... Just what are you trying... You just better tell me what you're trying to say because I'll tell you something right now. I guess I won't. Ready? Oh, yes, Donald. Oh, Donald. I'm so glad that everything is back to normal and that awful assignment is over. No, but it's not. That's what I was going to tell you about. I have to go to Washington. D.C., that is. For how long? Well, only a couple of days. We should be back by Monday. We? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Pat and me. I. Pat not. Uh, uh, the, the office decided I needed a secretary, and since Pat's my secretary, the office felt that she was the natural one to send. Naturally. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll tell you about it. Good night, Pat. I'll pick you up at 8.30 in the morning. I'll be ready for you. Uh, good night, Miss Marie. Oh, good night, Miss Crawford. <clears throat> well, honey, uh, where do you want to go for dinner? Oh, nowhere fancy. How about that charming little place across the street from the White House? <laughs> so, there they are, the two of them, out of town together, in the same city, in the same hotel, maybe even in the same room. How do I know? Isn't it kind of hard to tell from here? Well, it doesn't really make any difference. Tom and I are through, finished. You proved that last night. You had a fight? Couldn't. He was so sweet, so nice. It was terrible. <laughs> terrible? All the unmistakable signs. He was gay and, and charming. The charm just oozed out of him. And then he talked and talked and talked. And not once, not once did he mention Pat's name. What's wrong with that? Ruthie. When she first came to work, all he did was talk about her. Now he goes off to the capital of the United States of America with her and not one word. Add that up. But, Ann, Donald's always been nice and sweet to you. It's never made you mad before. Believe me, when a man gets that gentle, that considerate, when he looks at you with that cow eye look, it's because he doesn't want to hurt you when he knows that he's about to. Well, I'm not going to let Donald have to go through that. Go through what? All that difficulty, all that embarrassment, the pain of, of trying to be gallant. And he would, you know. I know him. Well, the only solution is the clean, quick break. By the time he comes home, I'm going to be completely out of his life. He'll be free, I'll be free. And we can always say that we parted with, with no scenes, no hysterics, no nothing. Yeah, since you're doing it all by yourself. Doing what all by myself? Breaking up with Don. He doesn't even know about it, does he? Of course not. I don't want him to until it's completely over. <laughs> Finished. Forever. But why? 
because I love him. That's why. Oh. Oh, see, give me a hand. I want to pack. You're gonna move? Oh, well, of course not. I just want to put a few things back where they belong. Now, let's see. His tennis racket is in this closet. And there's his, oh, his clock radio and his picture. Oh, and the books will have to go through them later and the record albums. Now, where did I put that sweater I was supposed to darn? Oh, that's in the bedroom. <gasps> Don't let me forget his tweeter and his woofer. Even though they were a gift, they'd be a constant reminder. <laughs> his tweeter and his woofer. <laughs> Come in. Hi. Hello. I'll uh, just put these pages together for you. Thank you. Oh, uh, excuse the slippers, but when you sit at a typewriter for hours, pretty soon your legs crave a little luxury. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, we never would have made the deadline if it hadn't been for you. You're a tiger. Well, I enjoyed every minute of it. Working with someone you like makes for a very nice tired. My thoughts exactly, very aptly put. And I admire you. You're good. Very good. <clears throat> Thank you. I uh, consider that high praise indeed. Likeable, admirable, and uh, just a little bit stuffy. Oh, that's very male. Very appealing. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Uh, this is th this is good. This is real, real good. Thank you. Is there anything else I can do for you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you know, all my life, I've wanted to be a class A number one newspaper man. You know what I mean? Mine like a steel trap. Honest, uncompromising, and absolutely devastating with women. <laughs> uh, you're making it very tough. I was hoping you'd say that. Yeah, right, right. right. And, th and this was all part of it, too. Washington, D.C., high priority assignment, gorgeous secretary with uh, great legs. <laughs> I like her, she likes me. Who could ask for anything? Yeah, more. right, 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 right. <laughs> But I never figured on anything like this. <laughs> I mean, I mean, here it is. <laughs> and listen to me. Sorry, baby. I left my heart in a second-story walk-up with a classy little brunette from Brewster, New York. <laughs> I, I really never figured on saying anything like that. I see. Yeah, well, it, it shows you the best laid plans. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're sorry. How do you think I feel? Well, just in case you change your mind and you're ever in the neighborhood, the door's always open. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it.
Such a waste. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I couldn't wait until I saw you. I had to call you to tell you how very proud I am of you. Proud of me? Did you say you were proud of me? I am. I want you to know I appreciate what you've done. Oh, how, how do you know? Are you home? I'm at the airport. Look, honey, I knew Pat was giving you a bad time, but you were so great, so understanding. Never saying a word, never making an issue when you could have made things very difficult. I never could have done the story, gone away, if you hadn't been so wonderful. Oh, Donald, I, well, I, I, I wouldn't say I was wonderful. I would and I do. Thanks to you, thanks to your, your faith and understanding and trust, everything worked out great. Listen, honey, don't let anybody ever tell you you're a little girl. You're a very mature young woman. Well, uh, well, when, when you get back, we'll, uh, we'll have dinner and... But I am back. You said you were at the airport. I'm at the New York airport. I'll be at your apartment as soon as possible. Oh, Donald, that's terrific. I, I certainly hope modern travel is what they say it is. I mean, you know, 40 minutes from Washington to New York and, and two hours from the airport to the city. Oh, honey, look, you don't have to fix up for me. Yes. Yes, I, yes, I do, Donald. I'll see you. Oh, my gosh. Can I do it? I've got to do it. <laughs> Got his tweeter and his woofer. <laughs> uh, just a minute. Coming. Here I am. I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm really, really proud of you. Yeah. Well, in a way, I'm kind of proud of myself. I'll have this typed up in a couple of days, Mr. Hollinger, honey. Oh, may I do something for you, miss? Oh, yes. I, I'd like to see Mr. Hollinger. I'm Anne Marie. Well, I'll get him for you, darling. Hi. Hi. What um, happened to Pat? She's working for Mr. Kinsella. <laughs> Who's that? That is Mrs. Leconte, my new secretary. Where did you get her? The same pool as Pat, only I think she's been there longer. I certainly hope nobody around here thinks I picked her out for you. Why would anyone think that? Well, when you think about the perfect secretary, that's exactly what every wife and girlfriend secretly has in mind. <laughs> uh, Mrs. LeConte, I'm going to take Miss Marie to lunch. Oh, fine. Enjoy yourselves. Oh, thank you. You're welcome, lovey. You should wear a sweater. <laughs>